So when I first began working on keeping AI generated characters consistent across scenes, I kept running into one major issue. Their appearance would constantly shift. One moment the eyes would change, the next it was the outfit, and sometimes they didn't even look like the same person. After generating over a thousand characters across all the top AI image tools, I finally figured out which ones are worth using and which are just a waste of time. In this video, I'll walk you through the exact tools and methods I use to maintain visual consistency across multiple scenes even after 10 or more generations. I'll show you how to lock in facial features, clothing, camera angles, and expressions using a few key prompts and editing tricks. Let's start with ChatGPT and Dolly 3. To begin, I create a base character in this case. I want an old, gritty coal miner. The more detailed the description, the better Dolly performs. So inside ChatGPT, I write something like this. A highly realistic portrait of an elderly coal miner wearing a soot-covered helmet and rugged overalls with a gray beard and dirt-smudged face standing inside a dim coal tunnel. Being very specific about the face, setting, and clothing helps Doll E produce an accurate starting point. Once the image is ready, I check to see if it captures the look I want. It usually gives me just one image, so it's all about whether that one feels close enough to your vision. Next, I want to place this same miner in a totally different setting. Let's say he's at home cooking dinner. Thanks to Dolly's latest updates, I can prompt it with the same coal miner, now in a kitchen, preparing a meal, and it delivers. The results are surprisingly close to the original same general look, new context. But here's where things can get tricky. If I get vague, like the miner wearing a suit at a wedding, Dolly might still include the helmet or the coal stains, so I rewrite it. The miner, now cleaned up and in a formal suit, attending his son's wedding, holding a champagne glass and smiling. Now, the image reflects what I had in mind. He's dressed properly, the miner gear is gone, and he looks celebratory. One key tip, keep all your generations inside the same ChatGPT thread. Even though Dolly doesn't technically remember prior images, ChatGPT keeps context from your earlier prompts, which helps guide future results. It's not flawless, but traits like the beard, general face shape, or clothing often carry over better this way. If you want more direct control, Doll E's built-in image editor is where things get interesting. Say, I want to move the miner to a busy street. I select the image, mask around the background, and write, place this man on a bustling daytime city street and uh, Dolly handles the swap. Same guy, new environment. But when you start stretching the edits, like changing his clothes to, things start to break. Let's say I want to swap his dirty overalls for a sharp white suit. I just mask the clothing area and prompt, replace clothes with a crisp white suit. Doll E updates it. The character remains mostly intact, but changes like these can take time. Each image takes a few minutes to render, and sometimes the generation fails or gives you something off. You'll have to rerun it. There's no batch mode and memory resets every time, so manual precision matters. Here's the bottom line. ChatGPT with Doll E can give you fairly good character consistency, but only if you're super specific, keep everything in one chat and manually edit when needed. For simple scenes, it's fine. But for building a full story with scene-to-scene -scene continuity, that's where it falls short. Now let's jump into Midjourney, the platform known for stunning image quality. Until recently, its biggest drawback was consistency. You could create an amazing portrait, but getting that same character to appear in a new scene? Nearly impossible. That changed with their new character reference feature, and it actually works quite well. Here's how I use it. First, I head into Midjourney's web platform and click the Imagine Prompt area. I type something like, a 4K ultra detailed photo of an elderly coal miner standing in a dark tunnel, gray beard, blue eyes, dirty helmet, and rugged overalls. It gives me four image options. I pick the best one, upscale it, and save that version as my reference. Now comes the magic. I drag that upscaled image into the character reference panel Midjourney automatically attaches it to your next prompt using its CREF syntax, which tells it to maintain the subject's facial structure and overall look. So now, if I want this same miner sitting at home by the fire, I type, the same elderly miner, now seated near a fireplace, warm light on his face. Midjourney processes that and the miner stays recognizable. Same eyes, same beard, just a new setting. Want to push it further? 
let's say I want to update his outfit and location, maybe give him a clean suit and put him on a neon lit cyberpunk street. I type the elderly miner now in a sharp suit and fedora walking down a futuristic city street during the day. The reference image keeps the face stable while the prompt introduces the fresh environment and wardrobe. Now, if the character's face starts to drift when changing clothes or poses, I tweak the stylized value. This parameter controls how much freedom Midjourney takes with your input. The default is 100, which means it tries to match both the character and environment. But if I drop it to 50, it becomes more flexible with outfits while keeping the facial features consistent. So if I want to show him in gym wear, jogging on a treadmill, I write, Elderly coal miner with gray beard and workout gear, jogging on a treadmill. Same guy, totally new vibe, and mid-journey nails it. Another great method is using remix plus variations. This lets you explore small pose or expression changes while staying anchored to your character. I turn on remix mode, pick an image, and choose very strong variation. Let's say I want him holding a water bottle while facing the camera. I take the treadmill image, hit remix, and write, same miner, now facing forward, holding a large water bottle while running. It tweaks the pose and props, but keeps the character intact. This is ideal for subtle shifts like different emotions, gestures, or body angles without starting from scratch. One tip here, always build your reference library using Midjourney's own images. Uploading external photos tends to confuse the system and throw off the style. Midjourney works best when it's referencing its own generated visuals. To summarize, Midjourney has become a solid tool for character consistency. Start with a well-defined base image, save it, and then guide new generations using reference and prompt changes. Between the character weight system, remix tool, and stylized adjustments, you can now build surprisingly stable character stories. It's not perfect, wardrobe errors still happen and poses can reset, but it's a huge leap forward for multi-scene consistency and cinematic visuals. All right, now let's talk about OpenArt, a platform designed specifically for storytelling with repeatable characters. And in my opinion, this is the most reliable solution for building characters that stay consistent from scene to scene. What sets OpenArt apart is its multi-image character creation system. You can train it to understand your character's unique look by uploading a small set of images from different angles, expressions, or outfits. It then learns those features and locks them in for future generations. Let me show you how I use it. First, I go to the storytelling section and select consistent characters. OpenArt gives you three ways to get started. One, a full text description ideal if you're starting with nothing and want to build from scratch. Just describe the person in detail, their age, vibe, clothes, background, and open art will give you some solid options. Two, upload one image, perfect if you already have a good reference. Just drag it in, name your character, and open art builds a reusable model based on that single image. Or three, the most powerful option, upload four or more images. This is the method I use, and it gives you the most control over how the character behaves in future generations. So for this demo, I choose the multi-image option and upload six shots of the same character all generated earlier with OpenArt's image tool. To make them, I use their flux context model and typed an elderly coal miner with a wrinkled, dusty face, gray beard, kind but tired eyes, wearing a weathered helmet and soot-streaked denim overalls. Harsh lighting inside a dim mine shaft. Then I picked a few strong outputs with different angles and expressions and those became my training set. Once uploaded, I named the character, let's call him Rusty Miner. Then I hit create character and OpenArt starts building the model. Processing usually takes five to 10 minutes, sometimes even faster, depending on server load. During that time, it analyzes facial structure, clothing, posture, all the consistent traits across your uploads, and builds a full profile. Once the model is ready, I can now generate scenes featuring Rusty in all kinds of settings. Let's test it. Rusty Miner, seated on a wooden crate outside a mountain cabin at sunrise, holding a coffee mug, light morning fog in the background. Open art processes it. And boom, it's the same face, same beard, same energy. Only now it's in a totally different location. 
That's the power of locking in a character identity from the start. If I want to adjust the visual flexibility, I use the character weight slider. Default is 0.8, which keeps the look very consistent. But if I want a bit more variety, I drop it to 0.6 or 0.5. That allows more creative freedom while still anchoring the core features. I can also turn on preserve key features. When that's enabled, OpenArt keeps the exact outfit and vibe from the training set. But if I turn it off, I can change the wardrobe freely while keeping the same face. Let's try it. Rusty Miner at his daughter's wedding, clean shaven, wearing a black tuxedo and smiling proudly. We get a fresh version cleaned up and dressed for the event, but still clearly rusty. This is where the tool really shines. Now, here's something unique to open art, the pose editor. Say I want Rusty crouched by a fire, roasting something on a stick. I go into pose your character, pick a base male body, and manually adjust the limbs to match the action. Crouched position, lean forward, arm extended. Once I apply the pose, open art uses that as a 3D map for the generation. Now I write, Rusty Miner crouched next to a campfire at night, roasting a marshmallow, surrounded by glowing embers in a forest clearing. The result? Same character, new body posture, totally different vibe, and it all holds together. If you want full creative control without messing with models or complex tools, open art is the easiest way I've found to create consistent characters across stories. It includes built-in editing, expression adjustments, pose control, background changes, and even wardrobe swaps all in one workflow. So whether you're building a comic, animation, or visual novel, this platform is built to help you move a character through multiple scenes without starting over each time. It's fast, user-friendly, and requires no technical setup. If I had to recommend just one tool for true plug and play consistency, open art is it. Upload your images once, and you're ready to reuse that character across infinite storylines. Want more tips like this? Hit follow, save this, and build smarter stories. Thanks for watching.